Okay, so this is a uh, video on how to produce bar charts uh, uh, for an ANOVA, um, where you've got three IVs and you want to put it all on one figure, um, and you want to take the data out of SPSS, put it into Excel, produce as near as possible an APA format bar chart. So we're going to look at how to produce a bar chart for more than one IV. We're going to do three IVs, how to edit it, make it APA, uh, but also how to use syntax to rearrange the way the um, data looks coming out of SPSS to make it easier to get exactly what you want in uh, Excel. Okay, so this is uh, an ANOVA that we've used uh, in the tutes, uh, two by two by three mixed factorial design. Uh, so first IV is color with two levels, red and silver. Second one is incentive, no reward, no reward. And uh, the third uh, IV, oh, it's not two by two by three, it's two by two by two, I am mistaken. Doesn't matter. Uh, driver group, poor drivers, uh, are drivers with violations and drivers without violations are boring drivers, uh, skilled drivers, sorry. Oh. Anyway. Um, and the DV is the mean number of objects identified. Okay, so first we want SPSS. And here is our ANOVA output. Okay, so you've seen this before. Now, uh, if you look down the left hand side, down the navigation pane, uh, general linear model, all the blah blah blah, all the different bits, right down the bottom, it has number eight. I'll just widen this out so you can see what's going on if I pull that across. Right down the bottom there, number eight, driver group by color by incentive. It's representing the three-way interaction. Um, but what it actually is, is a uh, table of means and standard errors. So if I click on that, I go straight to the bottom of my output. Notice I've got nothing else behind it. If I had produced charts, they'd be below there, but as it is, it's the last thing I've got. So you want this table here. Okay, with this broken down by all three IVs. Okay, so I am going to copy that. And then I'm going to grab Excel, bring it in, and paste that. Okay, so there's that table there. Now, first thing I'm going to do is get rid of all these numbers, ones and twos and things. When Excel sees numbers and you ask it for a graph, it, it thinks that's data rather than levels of an IV. So just I'm just pulling that across so I can see the table it came from because I've lost which one's color, which one's incentive. So this column here is my color column. Color number one is red. So we type in red there and color number two, I have silver. Now my next column here, and you can see it in the SPSS in the background there, is incentive, and level one of incentive is no reward. Level two is reward. And do that here as well. No reward and reward. Okay, that's just going to help uh, SPSS out, uh, uh, rather Excel out a lot. And I'm going to change that to poor drivers. And I can change this one down here to skilled drivers. Okay. And I actually don't need to change these colors, uh, these um, numbers here. Okay. You'll see why in a minute. Trust me. Okay. So having done that, I now highlight, I, I ignore this poor drivers. I highlight from here to here. Okay, hopefully you can see that, that area there. Okay, just highlight that. Uh, and now I'm going to say, oh, actually I'm gonna move this across over here in the middle of the screen. Okay. So I've highlighted that, I click on insert. 
and up here are chart options of various sorts and what I want is a what is what Excel calls a column chart everybody else in the world calls them bar charts but we want these vertical ones I call them a bar chart I don't care okay so you just click on that and just grab this first option here see it's already showing your preview that is perfectly good right there notice I've got no reward reward no reward reward red versus silver okay so that's good that's got my poor drivers that's my poor driver data and now I want to add some more data I want the data for my um, skill drivers and to get that go up here to where it says select data I want to select some more data so uh, if I click on that I get this little window come up okay now so far I only have one series series one and I'm, while I'm here, I'm just going to edit that. I click edit. I want to give it a different name rather than just series one. So I click on this bit here. It says select range. So I'm going to use what I've typed into Excel to put names in places. So I do that there. It's got its data already in here. And I say OK to that. OK. Notice it's just changed to poor drivers. Uh, so now the next thing I want to do is add another series. I've got a series of columns here for my poor drivers. Now I want to add good drivers. So series name it says here what cell is the name in? It is in this cell here which is why I typed it all in before I started this. Click on there then it says where are the values where's the data for this thing again I click on there because I'm going to tell Excel where to find it and that data is here notice these are the means I'm highlighting the means for the skilled drivers and I click back over here and lo and behold it's got them and I click OK to that so now I have my two lots of drivers. I'm going to say OK to that. One of the things that I want to add to that, and here's where I get to add elements, I am first going to add a legend. And I get some choices. Well, let me, let me add it first. I can then format it later. I'll worry about the formatting in a minute. The other thing that I want to add are error bars. But I'm going to go out here and notice that it's got standard error percentage, standard deviation. You'd be tempted to just grab standard error. Problem is, Excel will just make some up. There's, it's got some method for doing it, I forget what it is, but it doesn't work. So I click on more options. Error bars based on series. Which series do you want? Let's start with our poor drivers. Okay. So notice here it's got, do you want it to just go down, just go up, or do you want it to do both? We want it to do both. You know, what do you want the ends of it to look like? We want this bottom one here, standard error bars that we're used to looking at. Then down here it's got error amount. It's got fixed, blah, blah, blah. We're going to go custom. Okay. Specify value. And here we have the option to point Excel to the cells where the values are. So positive error value, how high do you want the bar to go up from the starting point? So we click on there. I want it to go up one standard error. These are my standard error values. So I'm going to click on here again and then click negative error value and I want same again. I want to go down as far as I want it to go up. Click on there. Click OK. There are error bars for my poor drivers. Now I want to do it for my skilled driver group. Now it's gone away from there. I need to go through that whole process again of saying what do you want? 
I want error bars, what kind of error bars, give me some options, and I want custom ones. I do not trust Excel. Specify the values, positive values. This time I'm in my skill drivers group. Although the standard values are the same because they're both you know, too complicated, they're the same. Click on there. Now the negative values, how far should the bars go down? They should go down that far as well. Click on there, click OK. I now have error bars that represent one standard error. Okay, so next thing I want to do is edit this thing a bit and make it APA. First thing I'm going to do is get rid of those horizontal lines that Excel likes to put on. So I selected them, I clicked on them, just the left click, and then hit the delete key, got rid of them. Uh, I highlight the numbers in the axis, and I want to make some changes to that. First thing I want to do is put a decent line for the X axis. So I choose solid line, where it says line. Okay, notice that I, I picked this paint pot here, which is for fill and line. And it gave me fill, and here's line. I want a solid line, don't want a pretty blue one, I want black, I want boring. Because nine times out of ten, I'm going to print these black and white. Okay, so we've made the x axis, if you look at that. So let's just right. see. So notice I now have a black line down here for the x axis. I now want to do the same thing for the y axis. So I click on that material and go over here. Fortunately, I'm still in the formatting menu. And I click solid line again. And this time it's guessed that I want black. Okay. Very clever. Yes, I do. Okay. So there's that. Now, uh, you may notice that I have these vertical black lines. I'd love to be able to get rid of them. You can't. At least as far as I know. If anybody can work out how to, there's money in it. Um, like a dollar, I don't know, but anyway. Okay, um, so there's that. Uh, the other thing we want to do, we probably want to change the color of these bars. Printed black and white, these could come out pretty much the same shade of gray. So still in the format thing notice here i've got border i'm going to get a solid border and it assumes i still want black and that's good because i do fill i want a solid fill you can do pretty gradients and all sorts of things but i'm going for a uh, solid fill and i'm going to go gray and then the other, my poor drivers, uh, I want no fill. But I do want a border, otherwise you won't be able to see them at all. Okay, let's see how that's looking. Okay, looking pretty good. Now, these numbers over here, don't want all those decimal places. And it's going to let me adjust that if I go, I think I have to go to axis options. Oh, there it is, yep. Down the bottom, number. Click on that. What kind of number do you want? I I'm gonna get rid of that. I know that. Uh, and up here, I don't want custom. I want number. It's because I pasted it across from uh, SBSS. It thought that's some kind of strange format. I don't know what it is. Uh, so I change their decimal places. Let's go none. So I typed in zero, hit the enter key, it's gone to none. Okay, so that's much better. Now, I want all my fonts in this thing changed. So what I've done there, I've just highlighted the whole thing. I don't want to have to do it piece by piece. I've just highlighted the whole thing and so I'm going to do it up the top. Go to the home section of the ribbon in Excel and do it the old-fashioned way. Scroll down here to our old favorite Times New Roman. Do that and 
12 point. Do that. Looking pretty good. Notice it's almost API. Now I've got things here like I can change. Uh, now let's see, somewhere in here. Legend options. That's what I was looking for. I can move it around. I can put it across the top. I kind of like across the top because it lets these words spread out. And often as not, that's fairly, you know, wasted space anyway. So I can even, you know, drag it down there, things like that. Uh, and I reckon that's pretty much API. So that's how you do that. And now I can copy that. And I could go to a Word document or wherever I want and uh, paste it in. And there's my nice API looking um, chart. Okay. Move that one up beside there. And I need another one. Now, what if I didn't want my two driver groups to be my two colors, but instead I wanted my two colors to be the bars beside each other? Maybe I had hypotheses that were specific about compare one color to the other, and I want to rearrange that. I can do that. Remember that in producing the chart, I based it on. Let me get away from that chart in case it edits it. I based it on. I based it on that, which left me drivers as my two series, which meant that they ended up being the two different colors. I can rearrange this table. I can do it manually here in Excel, move all the cells around. Um, but I can go back to SPSS and talk it into putting colors out here and drivers here, or incentives here and drivers there. And you know, I can do whatever I want. Notice that it's drivers, then colors, then incentive. Okay. If I now go back to SPSS. And look there. See here, driver group by color by incentive. The reason it did that in that particular order was because that's what it's got in this syntax. It just it it always the the color incentive with the order I chose to put my repeated measures in. It always puts you between groups um, either first in that series for some reason, but I can change it. If I open up where it saved the syntax in the output and copy all of that, copy that, and then go and do it from here. New syntax. I can paste that syntax in, and see here where it's got driver by color by incentive. So I said I wanted my bars to be the different colors. So I need color to move back here. Now you've got to make sure the asterisk goes in between them. You don't need one asterisk, otherwise it'll get confused. Okay, so I've just changed the order that they're here in this line here. Notice it says estimated marginal means. That's what the table is. It's a table of estimated marginal means. Tables should look like this. Color, then driver, then incentive. Okay, so now I highlight that. Turn in all that. We'll go over there. Click play. Uh, so I'm having a bit of a technical issue. It's, SPSS is not going to run that, but trust me, it would have produced the table with the columns in the order that I had specified in that syntax. Okay, and then I just go reproduce the table through exactly the same steps as we followed before, uh, just with the new table. Okay, so that gives you complete control over producing your bar charts, hopefully in APA style. I look forward to seeing them.